I think you can summon. Welcome yeah. back to the coverage of YCS Liverpool 2016. We're now starting round two of the event. Yeah. We're, uh, we're a little bit like, woof, yeah, finally. Yeah, uh, we had a close call. Yes, we did. Um, but we did find a, a great feature match for you guys. It's going to be um, an all-Dutch affair, so to speak. Yeah. With uh, Matthijs Schumann going up against Yuri Lansmann. Uh, both of these guys have been playing at the, the top tables before. Yeah, definitely. Uh, did advance, um, I think, at least once or twice to the top 64. Yeah. Um, and Yuri is a former national champion, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. I'm not 100% sure what the biggest accomplishment I of... I think uh, Matthias has done pretty well at nationals as well. I don't think he's won it, but he's definitely done pretty well. Yeah. So uh, these guys are going up against each other, and I think it was Yuri who complained because it's the second round in a row that he has to play against another guy from from um, the Netherlands. Yeah. So he's like, I have to eliminate all my countrymen. I don't like this. <laughs> um, and he's he's doing it with a very strange deck. Yes, uh, that is of course the story here. Uh, one of the reasons why we got these two, uh, apart from the fact that they are very nice guys and uh, playing creative decks. Yeah. So uh, what do Yuri we have? Yuri is playing uh, Paleozoics. That's a that's a deck that many guys discarded right away, from what I know. Yeah, well, we we don't actually have. Um, it's to missing a couple of cards well, that have missing, been released in the OCG. It's, yeah, it's currently missing totally awesome. And that's obviously a great card. Yeah, um, not just because of the name, but um, no. It Some actually would say it was totally awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, swiftly moving on, we've got Matthias <laughs> playing uh, DDDs again, a deck that isn't at full power. Yes. And um, they're still missing uh, DD Lamia, which isn't released in the TCG yet. But um, they have a lot of the important cards, of course. Yes, so and, um, Flame Genghis being the big one. It's actually, uh, in, in some people think it's well positioned in this field. Yeah. Uh, do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really strong deck. I think if you manage to get, um, even if you don't win on that first turn, you know, by producing a really unstoppable board, if you have the both the dark contracts and your opponent only manages to just deal with your board, both those dark contracts stick around and you take yeah. you know you take two thousand damage, but then you can just go crazy with them. It again. Doesn't matter if you take two thousand if you can just win the game exactly. after that. It's yeah. it's like the the discussion about system down we had the last round. Yeah, where we said uh, you don't consider the activation cost because it just says I win the game. Yeah, exactly. And this is uh, pretty much it. All right, so we are dragging a little bit behind the main event. So let's take you guys to the table where uh, both the Dutchmen have already sleeved up and are ready to get their game on. Okay, there you have Yuri on the left and Mati is on the right. Um, when I actually I traveled from Manchester to Liverpool with uh, Mati without knowing it, um, we, oh we right. only realized when we when we got off the train. Ah, you were both on the same train. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, we were having a quick discussion on the way here, and he was like, "I'm so excited to be finally be playing again." Uh, he hasn't been playing in like a year. And he decides to play one of the most complex at the YCS weeks. at the YCS. Oh, YCS. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, he um, because the last few times uh, when he was at the YCS, um, he did judge. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. So uh, Yuri is kicking things off. Matthias <laughs> looks very funny. <laughs> He's just gone. Oh, oh, okay. So, so that's happening here. Yeah. Right. Matthias is is actually really cool, and it, even just being able to watch this, I can I can tell like how he's talking with this. He like helped his opponent by giving him his card <laughs> and shuffled his deck and put it back where it needed to be exactly on the spot. <laughs> he said, "Oh, it's okay. I'm just gonna help you out by uh, putting your cards back how they need to be, things like that." That's he's such a nice guy. Yeah, that's just how <laughs> Matthias is. All right, so yeah. um, Yuri uh, Yuri has cards to as well. Yeah, and he he does have the. He does have a hand for it, basically. Yeah. Um, so it's up to Matthijs for the first time after Yuri uh, just set three cards to his back row after that pot of duality activation with uh, Paleozoic, Pikaya, Moon Mirror Shield, Quaking, Mirror Force. Um, and now we're at um, Matthijs' is Yeah, so opens up with the Savant. This is the, the best opening to, you know, the, f the best normal summon to open. You don't really normal summon anything else. Um, goes gets his dark contract, which um, once per turn allows him to go and search for a DDD monster, a DD monster, which that also which includes the DDD DDDs, monsters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of alphabets going on today. Yes. Um, so he goes and gets the swirl slime, and the swirl slime's effect is you can fusion using cards from your hand. Uh, that's the, the main purpose of it. So 
Uh, you can discard it to fuse. Okay, he's going to play an upstart goblin first, so that's... That makes sense. Yeah. After first you do the search, then you do the draw. Yeah, because he needs to kind of dis you know, decide where he wants to go from here. It's a very combo-based deck. So, okay, he's going to play Desires first. Um, it makes complete sense. Kind of know, know you know, where you're going to go with it before you even go there. Yeah, minus nine for him. Yeah, quick nap, quick minus nine. And the first thing he did before he even put them in the banished pile is he uh, drew them. <laughs> uh, like, pick, pick them straight up to, to have a look at them. So, his hand is shaping up nicely here. Yeah, so he's got, uh, yeah, okay, this is a pretty decent hand. I mean, he's got one for one as well. Which means he's going to be able to go and get the necro slime. This is a really good hand here. I yeah, he just keeps going. Yeah, he's, he's he's just going to be able to keep going here. So he's probably going to go into Flame Genghis now. So Flame Genghis is kind of the the combo extender. That a few of them do the same thing. So he might not necessarily go Flame Genghis. Okay, does goes for Dark. Um, that's that's the w the one that I didn't expect him to go for. But um, yeah, why, why would you not expect it? Because uh, it's he he's the only one that doesn't have the effect of well. He's he's one of the ones that doesn't have the effect of when I summon another um, DDD monster, summon a DDD monster from the graveyard. He just protects the right. life points. This uh, was referring to that statement uh, prior to when we went live when you said this deck is extremely consistent because all the cards do the same thing. Um, that was Melfos. But yeah, oh, that was Melfos. That was yeah. that was DDD. Yeah, okay. Yeah, DDD is just really combo heavy. I mean, there's there's a, a huge chart of of DDD combos. Um, as soon as they get Lamia, where basically they can go from yeah. just <laughs> you, you can print it out for your deck box. Just yeah. you need a very large deck box to fit it all in. Yeah. Yeah. But th this weekend, uh, talking about combos has been one of my favorite topics, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's Pale Paleozoic. Uh, can, can Pikaya. Can it's Pikaya. Pikaya? Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Him I'm pretty certain because yeah. I can read it on the right side yeah. of the screen. Him and, him and um, cause I was, yeah, I was just looking at the card. Him and Canadia look, look very similar. So that allows him to discard a Paleozoic card and draw two cards. All of the Paleozoic cards have something that they do when they're actually played as a trap card. And then they all have the same effect of uh, once per chain, if a trap card is activated while the card's in your graveyard, you can special summon it back as a normal monster, level two aqua. So we're gonna more. we're gonna see that guy coming back to life. Yes. So very now soon. Yuri's doing this very popular move of setting five cards in those so-called stun decks. Yeah. Uh, so this this is what they're all about. Yeah. This is this is what this deck's about, really. So yeah, as we were talking about earlier, that's there's Wabaku. <laughs> there is Wabaku. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even though it doesn't draw a card. Yeah. Even though it doesn't draw a card. And um, yeah. So so he's gonna interfere with Matei's plans here. That's Olinodes, I think it's called. Olinodes is correct, yes. Yeah. They all have very interesting names. Olinodes, Halusia Genia. Uh, is this the archetype that first came out in Korea? Um, I th yes. I think so. Yeah, they, yes, they were part of like a special release that was only in Korea. Yeah. And I think it's the first time that, that the Koreans got a deck before the rest of the world, which is a pretty cool um, thing. It's the first time they got a, an archetype, but the, yeah, that's the, what I mean, yeah. Yeah, the first time they got uh, exclusives was many years ago. The first time it was a really relevant exclusive was Elder Entity Norden, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good for good for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they got the full range of, of uh, Elder <laughs> Entity cards. Right. There's, there's Elder Entity, Outer Entity, and one of the other ones I can't yeah, remember. Now I'm really curious about the the Korean meta game, what it's like and everything. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they always get kind of really strange cards. All right, so uh, it's it's Mate's turn, and he's trying to push through, of course, assembling this gigantic field. And um, how many ways does Yuri have to defend himself? I mean, Mult he's got multiple. I mean, of course, we got the Wabuku. Um, also got a moon mirror shield, but that's not going to help much in the opponent's turn. Um, and I think, I think he's just relying on Waboku right now. I mean, he's got more monsters that he can uh, summon so with those Paleozoic cards. Has he not got a mirror force? Um, was, yes, of course. He's got a quaking mirror force. Yeah. So that's pretty good. All right. Let's let's see where much is this going here. More combos. 
Yeah, that's purely what this deck's about. So this is um, Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is the one that's probably going to kind of make this matchup you know, doable for Matthias here. It allows him to, uh, so when it's Exceed Summoned, um, for the rest of the turn, other cards and their effects cannot be activated on the field, and other card effects on the field are negated. So that kind of stops everything. Yeah. Um, and then once during either player's turn, you can detach an Exceed Material and destroy all spell and traps on the field. So, yeah, <laughs> that, uh, that... That just completely that wiped Yuri's chances. Yes. <laughs> wow. So he just had to get to that. Yeah. To, to be able to win this matchup, really. And was it incorrect uh, for Yuri to not activate Wapoku, f like, seeing the writing on the wall? My my favorite uh, no, phrase. I, I think he might have done. I think he, he, he oh, did. Oh, okay. He, he kind of... He Can you change with the effect? Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. it's not completely busted. No. <laughs> no. Just not making sure. It's not quite a busted right uh, I mean, these Dragon. days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Yuri yeah. might not be taking any damage, and his monster's going to see another turn. Good for him. Yep. Uh, but all, all of those monsters are pretty weak. Uh, the Paleo yeah. monsters. But um, sure who says no damage can be dealt Correct. by a battle. So so yeah. even the damage. Oh, he did not activate it. Oh, he apparently he did not activate it. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can activate it. Yeah, you you can you can respond to it. Okay. Well, for some reason he just opted to take more than three thousand damage instead. Um, yeah, it seems strange. I'm not 100% sure why. D is the Wabaku maybe in hand? No, he's not. No, no, it, it was on the field. The only card mm. left in, in hand is Card of Demise. So, yeah, that's of course yeah, a I don't know. gigantic swing. Must be misreading something. So, there's the Card of Demise. Yeah, still. And uh, now Yuri needs definitely yeah, but something. But, but it doesn't matter because um, Kali Yuga can be played during your opponent's turn as well. Oh. Just, you can just go end phase, blow up all the spells and traps. Okay. <laughs> what a fair card. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not only does it do that, you get to target a, a dark contract card. Um, is that right? Yeah, I'm reading the right thing. Yeah, you, you get to, if, if you detach a material, you can target a dark contract card. That's why it's called the Duo Dawn King. Cannot just do it in your turn, it can also do it in your opponent's <laughs> turn. Yeah, I think uh, that's a pretty good card for this matchup, and I think that's that's it. Yeah, it's very hard to argue with that. Um, yeah. yeah, and you, you can you see, can you see yeah, his, yeah. visibly. <laughs> He's like, whoops. Yeah. That's that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can also see Andrea behind him. He's like, whoa. <laughs> 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 My job is done here. I'm just going to walk out of the screen right now. Oh um, this is it. And... <laughs> Daniel couldn't stand the pressure of being the only one in the background. He's like, yeah, I'm going to take a break as well. Wow, that that oh really hurts. Yeah. That really hurts. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think even Vavoku would have made like that much of a difference. Mm -mm, no. Of course, the monster would have stayed on the field. So Yeah. And the thing is, Yuri's only playing three monsters, actual monsters. And he's playing 51 cards. Okay, that seems a little excessive. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> it's yeah. a nice understatement. A little bit excessive, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's literally only playing three monsters. So he's playing 16 spell cards and then 30, 32, 32 trap cards. Yeah, um, Chinzo is his best cards. friend, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, he's playing uh, he's playing stuff like Jar of Greed as well in a 51 card deck. Yeah, and. This is one of those matches we, we kind of see it in the chat room where you guys are also saying, yeah, the, the rogue deck has the advantage. That is uh, definitely true. Like, very hard to argue at this point. Yeah. So what's going to come in from the side decks in between rounds now? Well, I think um, Yuri is definitely going to have a lot of trouble here because he, he has to set a load of cards. And if Matthias manages to make Kaliuga again, then... There's not much he can do. Yeah, it. there's not much to stop that. So I mean, he's got strikes, warnings. Um, yeah, strikes, warnings. That's that's it really. He's not got any. Um, his extra deck's just full of stuff for the Paleozoics. Okay, so we get one of these matches where the strategy of one player is hoping that his opponent is not going to draw into his best cards. Yeah, well, I mean. Matthias doesn't really have much for this either, but I guess that's purely because um, 
his main deck has something that's so good against back row. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's that's a pretty good it's a pretty good excuse if you ask me. Yeah. Like why would I side deck even more cards when I got the, the ultimate destruction tool? Yeah. Yeah. So that's you you were saying that the DDD uh, deck has like so many combos and uh mm. this is why this um why this deck is so good. Yeah, it's, it's probably just very crazy. hard to master, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Okay, there's uh, some solemn cards, and we're not going for those. No, definitely take the cards of demise. <laughs> Wetlands. <laughs> <laughs> that card was first printed. Oof, actually, I just put myself on the spot. I can't even remember when that card was printed. It was. Um, isn't that one from the first set? Yeah, we. No, don't we don't even have yeah, the card image. Too old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all, all our copies that we wanted to scan have been destroyed in the meantime. Yeah. Let nice. Me take a look. Oh, okay. See, look. This is this is the way that Yuri is able to combat his opponent. Yeah. All Aqua type monsters, uh, after Aqua, Water, level two or lower monsters gain twelve hundred attack points. That's very specific. Yeah, aqua type water aqua, aqua, level, level two. two yeah. There's like three different things you have to meet. Why? Why? If you're depending on on these cards, and also you want to always draw a card of demise, why would you then run fifty one cards? Yeah, I, I'm I'm a little confused as to why I'm running fifty one cards, but it's a fun it's a fun deck. So that yeah. contract of the gate is yeah. uh, how Mateus is uh, kicking things off here. Yeah. Still, I don't think uh, I don't think that it's necessarily it's necessarily gonna do him all that much if he doesn't manage to get rid of that. Okay. Yeah. See, we we, we were talking about Wabaku, but uh, the reason I uh, just had some information from our judges. Right. Reason he didn't play Wabaku is because he just completely forgot that Kali Yuga existed. Oh, so he was so much in shock that he was just like, yeah, you, you deserve to win this or what? No, he, he just, he, because as the moment that Kali Yuga summoned, that's when... Oh, okay, okay. So now you have to... blocking yeah. of everything. So you kind of have to predict that it's going to be summoned. Right, okay. That makes sense. So you obviously didn't see that coming. Yeah. All right. It's just getting even more confusing for me because he's playing cards like Char of Greed and uh, Legacy of Yata Garasu. All of which yeah. just replace themselves. Why do you play them one. when you play <laughs> more than forty cards? It's, it's yeah. I don't uh, get it. I guess may maybe deck out is a is a thing for him. Ooh, it might be taking the moon mirror shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so moon mirror shield, for those who don't know, is um. So again, I don't know the exact text of the card. It's one of those occasions where I don't know the exact text of the card, but I know what it does. Uh, basically, you equip it to a monster, and it will always win a battle by 100 attack points. I remember that also sneak preview to that card. Yeah, sneak preview was really interesting with Moon Mirror Shield. It's, yeah, it, it was basically whoever had Moon Mirror Shield was able to, to win the yeah. sneak peek. It, it was one of, those, uh, one of those situations where the first time it happened, I was still like, okay, I can still turn this around, and then... <laughs> <laughs> get rid of the monster somehow with like some destruction effect. Yeah, Moon Rush that just comes back. And then my opponent is like, yeah, put it on top of my deck. I'm like, what? Yeah, you just get it back for a very cheap cost of 500 life points. Um, yeah, so there's the Moon Mirror Shield. If this face up place this card on either the top or bottom of your deck, yes. And in the sneak peek, the you obviously always choose top. Yeah. It's... Um, it's also with a mulligan at the sneak peek, so of course you do the hardcore mulligan until you have this card in your hand. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's one of those strategies. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that sneak peek. Because <laughs> of like did I, I didn't like that, that one guy, match. Were you, were you that guy who didn't get Moon Mirror Shield, Ollie? Yeah, yeah I, you were. You're a little salty about I that. I ended you? up in second place. I had a really good, consistent deck that had like lots of tricks, and then this one card beat me. And I was like, this is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this time, Yuri has a lot more time to yeah. assemble his combos. So he's just and work through his fifty-one cards. Dark contract with errors. 
So yeah, if you control the DDD monster, you can negate all trap effects on the field. It just seems there are so many ways that Mate has to, to fight this deck. Yeah. I mean, right now it's it's for a change, not the trap cards that are yeah. able to give him a headache. But Yeah, so you're here is just combating this by trying to get all his trap cards out of the way before he knows this dark contract's going to come down. So yeah, Savant Thomas, uh, DD Savant Thomas in the Pendulum Zone allows you to add back the uh, Kepler, and then that's actually completing the Pendulum Scale. Kep Kepler will complete the Pendulum Scale. Well, it's six to six to ten. So he could have a big Pendulum Summon there with the Obliv Oblivion King, Abyss Ragnarok. I'm just looking for something like Magical Explode. Explosion that counts the number of traps in your graveyard, but <laughs> of course there is no such card. Nope. Nope. There's uh, the only other similar card to that is something like DD Dynamite, I guess. DD Dynamite, or um, there's one that does a hundred damage per monster in your grave, but I can't remember the name of it right now. It was from like Metal Raiders or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Yuri is done with his turn. Yep, I think Matthias is getting slowly but surely um, beaten down here by these <laughs> tiny little... Slowly but surely, he's down to 1,600. Yeah. <laughs> what he's are you talking about? <laughs> 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 well, he's been, he's been hitting him with the... They've gone back and forwards maybe two or three turns. And that is it. It's 1-1 one yeah. one between the Dutchmen. <laughs> Yuri uh, is able to tie the score... Yeah. Super surprising after that first game where we thought like, okay, Mateus has got this. Well, um, he got to go first and play his um, play his barrier statue, and that was it. Followed it up with a moon mirror shield. What what more can you ask for? Yeah. Y you can tell that uh, Daniel and Andrea are getting into this. And now they just uh, left the screen simultaneously. It's like <laughs> s synchronized uh, volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of your Olympic discipline at the U U Games. Yeah. Well, as long as they don't start doing a bit of aerobics. <laughs> the relax and workouts. Practice of Michael and Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we kind of miss those two guys. I mean, yeah. nothing against the other guys, but um, if you've been working with them for like 10 events in a row, it's uh, you. they just become part of the furniture, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what's going to change for the third game? It didn't look like anybody was side-taking here. No, I think probably not. I think both players probably put in what they needed. And I think anything that Yuri, Yuri has to side-deck is probably already in. So like the Barry Statues, which he, he did main-deck originally anyway, mm -hmm. um, is not going to change much. And I think Matthias is just going to go first here and hopefully open, um, open a little better than just being able to summon Kepler, and then that's, that's it. How consistent is this deck? The DDD the deck? Yes. Yeah, I think it's pretty It's pretty consistent, to be honest. They've, they've got um, three of the Keplars. They've got three of the Dark Contracts, which can get any of the DDD monsters. Just, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what Matthias opens here. I mean, the only time that you can really, like, brick that heavily is if you open, like, all of your contract cards. Um, right. Which he's, he's opened quite a few contract cards here, actually. This deck is also, as you as you turned, uh, said before, it's going to become even better in the future. Yes. Yeah. So maybe not too bad to have it on the radar already. No, no. I think it's I think it's pretty decent at the moment. Um, it becomes kind of really, really powerful when uh, when DD Lamia uh, gets introduced to it. All right, so Matthias is going first, of course. Yep, so he, he got his... Kepler. Yeah. Kepler and then and Dark Contract with the Gate. Yep, so he can go and search for any of the DD monsters that he needs. He has Thomas as well, so he could do something with Thomas. But still, this is not kind of... Not as big combo-orientated as I was expecting, to be honest. Hmm. No, well, maybe his playtesting revealed that... It is better to just go for a for a number of combos instead of all of them at once. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> he may be trying to play like a, a more consistent version of it, but I think he's just he's opened a bunch of 
uh, contract, contract cards. Yeah. Hmm. And the contract cards are good when when you already have like enough monster DD monsters to to play with. To work with, yeah. Yeah, whereas at the moment he's not really got much. Uh, Yuri, okay, on so the other hand, uh, the he does have Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning, and, and since it doesn't appear like Mateus is going to kick off with like the most explosive of turns ever, um, we, we are back at this question. Do you leave the, the... Well, normally we ask the trap cards in because people are only playing three to five. <laughs> <laughs> He's, of course, leaving all the trap cards in. Yeah. Um, all 30-something so of them. Yeah. So he goes with the Oblivion King here. Um <coughs> So he's going to actually be able to make some reasonable plays with this. I was unsure as to whether he was going to get Swill Slime or not, but he decided to go with um, go with the Ragnarok instead. Uh, do you agree with that play? Yeah, I think so. I think Ragnarok's a good choice. So, yeah, building his Pendulum Scale up here. Fusion's using the contract that he had. And then Thomas's effect, well, th sorry, it's uh, Ragnaros's effect that summons the Thomas from the Pendulum Zone, and then Thomas's effect in the Monster Zone is going to activate. So that gets him to to summon another level eight DD monster from his deck. So yeah, he destroys the Ragnarok, goes and goes and gets a, a level eight from his deck. Probably going to just go get another Thomas or or a uh, Ragnarok. Those, I think those are the only two choices. But right. generally, you would get another Thomas. Okay, goes for Ragnarok. <laughs> Such luck. Yeah. It's one or the other. <laughs> yeah, but that, that gives him some nice rank 8 players now. Yeah, definitely not looking bad, Probably that, that opening. We, we may see my, my favorite uh, number card, which we have, number 38, Hope Harbinger Titanic Galaxy. No, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Yeah, Missed that one. If, if it's your favorite, you should really know how to yeah. um, say wow. the name correctly. Yes, I know. I just call it Titanic Galaxy. That's why. Yeah, I Number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Or the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Probe, which is called it 38. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, this is, of course, a gigantic uh, card. Not yes. that Not that easy to summon. No, no, no. Not that easy to summon. In a deck like this, it's one of the Fairly easier easy. ones. But So, Tyus here needs to keep the keep that uh, dark on the field the it's the ddd dark monster because it's it, yeah it's called d arc <laughs> it's that's yeah. not dark um like Jean dark the yeah exactly yeah the french uh, female fighter which was a big deal at the time yeah in the medieval ages yeah so yeah so you can see he's gone up to 11000 life points now the reason for that is during his standby phase he would have taken 1000 damage per dark contract card mm -hmm. But instead, if you have Dark on the field, you gain those life points. Pretty good card. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. But it's, it's just made for the archetype. If you, if you know, okay, I'm going to try and grind out a little bit, um, then you know, putting, putting Dark out on the field and just gaining a bunch of life points is pretty good, especially against a deck like Yuri's. Matthias is going to be able to have some quite big explosive plays, being able to take out his life points at once. But if Matthias puts himself like... You know, maybe like fifteen thousand life points or whatever. Then Yuri's not going to be able to wipe that out in one sweep. Maybe not even two or three sweeps. All right. He's got a, a lot of small monsters. There's the allure of darkness. Yeah, this is what's made this deck actually super viable right now. I, I don't think the OCG had three allure of darknesses when this deck, even when it went to full power, they didn't have three allure right, of darknesses. Right. So, so we without we the draw, bow, draw power, that yeah. changes, of course, yeah. quite a whereas bit. Whereas we've got we've got full three three allure of darknesses. Yep. And then obviously pot of desires as well. Now we see a warning on um, another seventh, uh, Thomas. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, so Matthias is not going to pull any further ahead, but on the other hand, Yuri is taking two thousand damage as a cost. That's yeah. that's definitely not good news for him. No. So in this in this like turn of events, we've had. Matthias gain, he's now gone up to 11,000 and Yuri's on 6,000. That's quite a big chunk of difference. That is true. Yeah, if you al almost it, twice as much. Yeah. If you looked at it as 3,000 to, f to um, 8,000, that you'd see that as, like, that's a huge difference. Yeah. So if you think about it in, this sim in a similar fashion. All right. Yep. So he's attacked with, um, with the Hope Harbinger, and then he's going to flip over that Dark Contract, which negates all of the trap cards on the field. 
There's a there was a quaking mirror force, and then yeah. in response, there's a Canadia, which um, is a Book of Moon. Right. So he responded with the Canadia. So he played the Canadia resolved before the Dark Contract. So so book down the, the number thirty eight. So the uh, trap card, the mirror force went through basically. No. No. It didn't the mirror force was negated, but the Paleozoic trap card um, put put it face down. So he doesn't down. doesn't take any damage. Yes. At least. Yeah, because those two would have been putting him down to 400, which is yeah. scary territory. Oh, obviously. All right. So Yuri's standing with his back against the wall. He's uh, yeah. in the ropes, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just now we hear in the background that uh, it has actually been time in the round for the main event. Our, our match started a little bit later. Yeah. A good uh, five to eight minutes, something like that. So um, these guys still have some more time. Yeah, definitely. If before time is going to be called. Also, it was two relatively quick games, I would say. Yeah. I honestly wasn't expecting this to go very long. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Wabaku. Oh, it's just it's either DDDs do what they do or or the, he has a barrier statue or yeah. a, a emptiness or something, you know, some crazy trap card. Right. So he's going to be able to special summon back one of the Paleozoics that yes, he just activated. Yeah, because of Wabaku. Yeah, so otherwise you might be wondering, why is he first activating the Paleozoic card and now Wabaku? Yeah. Um, Mateus reacts with a Max C. That is, of course, fair game. I so don't. Uh, yeah. He, he doesn't get any more. Like his opponent is not going to special summon any more cards than one at a time. It no. seems so. So Maxi is always just going to be a one for one. Yeah, but you might as well not get not the card get one out for one. Way. Yeah. So okay. that Moon Mirror Shield putting work in again. Yeah. It's such a weird card. Is it? I think that's the first deck that it has a home in. Um, yeah. We're not talking about limited, of course. Um, this is the first uh, constructed deck that it has a home in. So yeah. the funny thing is, like, the attacks are not dealing any gigantic amounts of damage because it's always just 100 more yeah. than uh, the attack or the death of the opponent's monster. Yeah. So <laughs> if he were to win with attacks uh, with a moon-powered shield monster, then for the most part, that would just be, like, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100 like, yeah. uh, mini-pokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Matthias did le uh, lose quite a few life points here, but that's also because of he had to pay um, for yes, the dark contract. because the dark got taken out. Yeah, he, yeah, he paid 3,000 life points. Yeah, so he lost 100 because of the attack, which is not a lot, and then after that, 3,000 because yeah. of the dark contract. But you remember right at the start of the game, I was saying about how the thing with the DDD deck is if because the contracts get to stick around, if you're able to take that damage, then he can do a whole bunch now. Yeah. So he's going to yeah. go get the Swirl Slime. He's still got a number 38 that's sat there just waiting to get flipped back up. <laughs> that it does. Yeah. <laughs> that's what all the big monsters do. Yeah. Flip me! They're flip me! They're just like, come on! I want to <laughs> I want to attack something! I want to get into this. Yeah. <laughs> Pick me, coach! Pick me! <laughs> <laughs> Let me negate something! <laughs> yeah. I really want to negate something. <laughs> there we go. Here he is. Yes, he picked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I going to get warning? No, I'm looking good. Okay, yeah, let's go. It, it definitely looks good for, for Matthias right here. Yeah. Although, of course, the Moon Mirror Shield is also <laughs> active during your opponent's turn. Yeah. This is one of those things that you also learn when you play against the card for the first time. Like, first it attacks over something. You're like, okay, I can deal with this. Yeah, then it's you got to be like Metal Morph, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you attack into it and you're like, what? It also works on your opponent's turn? What? Yeah. Yeah, so and just right back to where we started. Yeah, getting another dark here using Swell Slime, I think. How is he going to uh, get over the monster? Um, not too sure. I think he's going to have to make something, uh, some kind of rank 8 play. He yeah. wants to bring back another dark. Strike. That would have been that would have been the rank 8 play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm surprised that uh, I don't know whether I'm just completely misreading Dark Contract with Errors, but I'm I'm sure that he could have played that much. He could have played the, the Dark Contract to stop him being striked. Obviously, he'd have had to known beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's something 
Yeah, face down like a strike. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he just wanted to save it for his opponent's turn. I don't know. That's yeah, it's once per turn, so. It doesn't he have another? He doesn't have another DD card that he has to discard. You, you don't have to discard a card. Oh, you just have to control it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, Yuri just didn't have uh, didn't have enough here. Yeah, to push through. Yeah. So, in the end, Matthias Schirmer is successful yep. in this uh, battle of the Dutchmen between Yuri Lanzmann <laughs> and Matthias. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot that has gone down here, so let's go into our post-match discussion. <laughs> 